We welcome you to our worship service this morning. We are glad that you are worshiping with us wherever you happen to be. It is a blessing that God's Holy Spirit abides with us no matter where we are. In this early part of the new year, we look forward with anticipation uh, many good things in the coming year, and we are assured that whatever comes and whatever we face, our good Lord will be with us. In the way of announcements, uh, this coming Tuesday evening at 7.30, we will be having our first board meeting of, of this year. So remind all the board members of, of that uh, meeting. And on Tuesday, a week after that, the CWF will be having their first meeting of this year. So keep those things in mind. At this time, we will begin our worship. Our call to worship is from the 29th Psalm, verses 10 and 11. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Our hymn of praise is How Firm a Foundation. bow with me for the invocation and then join me praying the Lord's Prayer. Lord, you have brought us through another year. As we look forward into this new year, help us trust that in all circumstances you will be with us and sustain us. We pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray saying, Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gospel lesson is from the book of Luke, chapter 3, verses 15 through 17, and 21 through 22. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, 
the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we gather together in worship with our hearts turned toward you, with our ears open to hear your word, with our eyes straining to see the goodness that you have given to us. We thank you so much for all the good things that we have seen and experienced throughout all the years of our lives. You have loved us with an everlasting love and have sustained us through the very worst of times. We thank you for your presence. As we come to worship you today, help us that our hearts will be open to your presence and to your love, that we might be transformed by your love and become all that you want us to be. We ask forgiveness of our sins and strength against all temptation. We ask that our eyes will be open to see the opportunities of service that you have given to us. We ask that your love will be so strong within us that when needs arise for those around us, we cannot help but reach out and respond in a positive and loving way. We pray that you will be with this congregation, that you will light a pathway before us, that we might see the things that you would have us do, that we might hear your call to service, that we might be faithful in sharing the good news of the love of our Lord for all people. We pray that you will be with your church in every place, that around the world, the good news of the saving power of Jesus Christ our Lord will be shared and that your love will be seen in your people and will reach out to those near and far, high and low, young and old, rich and poor, and that all will know that they are included in your boundless love. We pray that you be with our nation, that you will guide our leaders, that you will grant them wisdom in the things that they do. We ask that you will bless us as a people, that we might learn to be more faithful in doing what is right, what is just, in, in all the things that we do. We pray this not just for our nation, but for all nations. And may that day come when we all acknowledge one another as children of God, may that day come when all can live together in peace and with love and joy. We pray for those who are sick. We pray that you will be with them in a special way, that your healing touch will be upon their bodies, their minds, their spirits. We pray that there will never be a time that they feel that you are absent from them. We pray that you will use us as instruments of blessing in whatever ways that we can be of service. We pray that you be with those who have lost loved ones and that they will be comforted by your loving presence and by the loving presence of your people. And now, Lord, be with us and help us that we might understand and learn from your word your will, and your way. And we pray this in the name of Jesus, our risen and exalted Lord. Amen. Our scripture text for this morning is taken from the prophet Isaiah, one of my favorite passages in scripture, chapter 43 of Isaiah's prophecy, beginning in the first verse and going through the seventh verse. Listen for the word of the Lord. 
But now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior, I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather you up. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Here ends the reading from God's holy word. May he add his blessings to our understanding of it. Let us pray. And now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our Redeemer and our strength. Amen. In the early part of the year, we usually take stock of the things that have happened before us And we look into the future and wonder what is ahead of us. How many times in the last few days have you wished somebody a happy new year? I know I have done so quite a few times. And what is it that we mean when we say happy new year? Do we mean that we hope that in the coming year, And expect in the coming year that there will be no challenges, that there will be no sorrows, no hard, rocky roads ahead of us? I don't think so. I think all of us understand that what has been will be in this world. Uh, We find that in Scripture that uh, what has happened before will many times happen again. But... When we look around and think about how God has blessed us, I think through all the difficulties of life, we can see that he has been with us. He has sustained us. He has shown us his love. Now, I know in the last couple of years, when we get to the end of the year, there have been those who rejoice that that year was over. When 2020 came to an end, people were rejoicing that a new year was starting, and we were all expecting things to be so much better than they had been uh, before. At the end of 2021, again, there have been many who have rejoiced that that year is over, and they hope upon hope that 2022 will be much better. And we all hope that. But I think if we look at history, we can see that even in 2020 and 2021, we had not been through the worst of times. If you think about the things that people in times past have been through. I often think about that time of World War II when Mothers and fathers and wives and brothers and sisters were sending off many, many of their family members into war, into the face of danger, into the face of death. And how horrible a time it must have been, especially when they would go spells without hearing anything from their loved ones, wondering if they were living or dead or injured or or just what state they were in. 
And many of those people in those places of battle uh, underwent things that you and I cannot even imagine. But God brought them and brought the world through all those things. It was our own doing, these wars that we fight. We sometimes think that God has, is bringing all these things on us, that he has gotten angry with us and he's causing all this terrible destruction. But I don't think that is truly how it is. In scripture, we find that so often we are facing the consequences of our own actions. It is true that there are people who suffer and people who die, not because of anything they've done, but because of some, someone else, the wrong someone else has done. Uh, many suffered unjustly, many died unjustly. And even in our own time, in our own nation, we do things in our nation that affect people in other parts of the world, people who have no voice in the things that we are doing. And as individuals, we often think, well, what I do affects no one but me, and therefore it's okay. What we don't realize is that we're all in this together. What one does affects another, whether we realize it or not. Our sins, the collective sins of us all, have consequences and we face those consequences and God has warned us time and time again of that. And even through all of that, he still loves us. He still cares for us. When we have done the worst that we can do, things that we should never have even dreamed of doing, his love still abides with us. He still sustains us. He still finds a way for the world to survive. He still works to bring us all into his kingdom of love and life and joy and peace. Our God is a good and gracious God. Our Old Testament lesson is a reminder of that. The people of Israel had failed to listen to God or his prophets. They had insisted on their own way. They had brought terrible destruction upon themselves. And part of it was their own doing. Part of it was the doing of other nations that also were in sin but God had warned them and God had warned them and then the destruction came. Some thought that God had turned against them, that he was going to destroy them forever, that his love had, had finally been put out and had died away. But that can never be. These people in Isaiah had been through some of the worst things that uh, people could endure. And here, God is sending a word to them, a word through his prophet Isaiah, that his love had not fallen away from them. His love still was with them. He was still sustaining them in all the circumstances that they were facing. Now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear. For I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. God knew his people. He knew their hearts, he knew the greed, he knew the sin, he knew all the things about them that there were to know. And yet he still loved them. He knew the violence that was in their lives, he knew the things they had endured, and he saw the suffering of his people and the anguish of their hearts, and he was moved by his own love. He was moved to reach down and to bring them salvation. They had brought all of this upon themselves. And you know how sometimes if someone needs some help and we find out that their problem is a problem of their own doing, we tend to shy away from that and say, well, 
it, under other circumstances, I'd be happy to help, but he brought it on himself, so I'm not going to do anything. God looked upon his people, and in spite of the fact that it was their sins that had caused their suffering, he still loved them, and he still was willing to reach out with salvation to bring them back into a place where they could survive and grow and find joy and love again. Do not fear, he said. Many of them were afraid. They were afraid of the future, afraid of what was going to happen. All they could see was that their light was going to be extinguished in the world. There would no longer be the people of Israel. They were afraid that their God had finally and, and completely forsaken them. They were afraid that their God was angry with them and that his anger would finally destroy them. But he says to them, don't be afraid. I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. Notice, he did not promise them that all the days ahead of them would be wonderful, that there would be no challenges, that there would be no suffering, that there would be no sorrow. He did not say to them that there would not be trouble ahead of them. In fact, he had not acknowledged that there would be. When you pass through the waters and through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you, he says. So they were going to have troubles, but he was going to sustain them through it. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned and the flame will not consume you. He didn't say they wouldn't get into a fire. He didn't say that they wouldn't suffer, but he said they would not be consumed. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your God. Savior. In our day and time, we have known trouble and trouble and more trouble, much of it of our own doing. We have made choices that have made the things that we have faced worse than they would have been. We have turned our hearts away from the truth and believed in a lie time and time and time again causing more and more trouble. We look to the future and we see that, that there is so much darkness, so many things that could go wrong, so many things that could make life miserable for us. But we can say with certainty from what we have learned from our God and from his son, Jesus Christ, that he will be with us when we look into the future. We need not be afraid he has not promised that we won't have trouble, but he has promised to be with us. Indeed, Jesus told his disciples, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I am the Lord, your God, your Savior. We live in a time when there is much we do not know. We, we don't always know how what we do today will affect a future generation. We're learning that some of the things that we have done have, have brought great change to our world, to our climate. We have destroyed many living things from the face of the earth, and all of that has consequences that we will face. So much that we don't know when all of our sins together can create terrible things upon the face of the earth, and when I can do one thing here and you do something there, and I cannot control what you do, and, and what you do does not control what I do, and we create a mess. Our lack of power, our lack of knowledge is such that we cannot save ourselves. And we have known that, humanity has known that from the 
very beginning, we cannot save ourselves, but God has sent us a Savior. He has sent us a love that is so powerful that he will be with us and sustain us through whatever it is we might have to face. He can transform our hearts and our minds and help us that we might change our ways and guide us into the ways of life that are ever, is everlasting. And even in the face of death, and every year we know that there is sorrow upon sorrow, people leaving our world, but there's also the gift of new life bringing joy again. But even in death, we are enfolded in the loving arms of God and we can be certain that even in death, all will be well because God loves us. He has called us by name. We belong to him. And that loving spirit which brought all creation into being and has sustained us and abided with us through all of these generations will continue to abide with us forever. For that reason, we thank God. At this table, we celebrate the greatest love of all, the love of our God for all of us. A love of our Lord who was willing even to suffer and die because of us rather than harm any of us. At this table, this bread reminds us of our Lord's body. This cup reminds us of his blood given for us. 
And we gather at this table, not because we've earned a spot here, not because we can claim anything, but because our Lord's love has reached out and offered to us the gift of being a part of his family, the gift of forgiveness, the gift of being called the children of God. And so we gather here and give thanks. We gather here with others that we know and do not know, but all who are part of that one human family. And we give thanks. Let us pray. Lord, at your table, as we partake of this bread and this cup, remind us of your love that has never failed. Remind us of your love that is of such power that even death could not hold you. Remind us of your love which has the power to give us life that is abundant and eternal as we feed on this bread of life and this cup of blessing, cleanse us from unrighteousness, strengthen us in your service. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we recall, on the same night that the Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread And when he had blessed it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in a like manner after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had blessed it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Drink you this and remember that Christ died for you and be thankful. Let us pray. Lord, for welcoming us into your presence and to your family table, we give you thanks. Now that we have been nourished here in body and in spirit, strengthen us to serve and glorify you. May the love that you have shown us grow within us and be shared with others. May your light shine through us to others that they too might glorify you and be drawn into your presence. Use us to help bring your kingdom to pass here and now and throughout all eternity. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now unto Him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the Lord our Maker, be all honor and glory, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen.